Hey guys, and welcome back to Ellen Grant. Still in early spring, making our way, doing some field work. Had a hired helper out, subsoiling fields down here, and well, time to do that morning chore that we need to do pretty much every morning. That is into our animals. Of course, with season's play. Can't forget about our animals too long before, uh, before their productivity falls off and at risk of having them uh, well, die as a result of either lack of food or water. Here, let's go ahead and have some water. up their food area and we're gonna need to mix up a load of mixed rations. I'm gonna save this. And uh, use it in our mixed rations. Going to use our unit track. Pull our mixer. I might, might as well use what we have down here. I'm gonna need to put a bit of a ramp in. Actually, the first load of mixed rations I had to mix up, and I did not realize that uh, such a height difference. we have a bucket on here let's go ahead and clear off our sheep and pig pen feed the pigs get everybody water check on the sheep or not the sheep but the uh, chickens if we think they need any water or not water but wheat other w word Our chickens, they're good. Cheap. Pigs are going to need some food. Cleaning up. Like the wool, this particular area spawns in sideways. Definitely better if it spawned in 90 degree rotation. So if you remember from our first video, I mentioned that the pig food, this all silo full bucket of pig food all 
What are our pigs? I think they're going to take the whole bucket. I think until I get a ramp, uh, we're going to position the mixing wagon just below. The road and we'll use the road. Get boss here up above the mixing station. And that, my dear people, is how we mix up our TMR. So I wasn't really sure on the mixing ratio for this particular mixer uh, because it is a little odd size capacity. Looks like that ratio is going to work pretty good. Two hay bales, one straw bale, and then fill the rest up with silage from our fermenting silo. That'll work quite nicely. Well, we've got our morning chores done for the day. What we're going to do now is get up to the farm, hook up our fent to our uh, lime spreader. I'm going to go get some lime and uh, spread it on that one field over by the BGA. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, lime our grass before it gets too far into spring. Typically, lime would burn the grass. We want to put it on there before the grass gets started 
spring growth. Do have a worker still out there in our rigid track and the subsoiler. I'll be interested to see how this does uh, as far as um, fuel usage goes. So I'm using the more fuel usage mod, increased fuel usage mod, and that rigid track. It seems to go about two hours, and then it's it's empty. I've really never seen a tractor run out of fuel that quick. So let's see if this tractor runs out of fuel this fast, or if it's just a case of the Ritchie track having a small fuel tank. It's a possibility. A smaller fuel tank was installed, and to keep the overall a weight distribution as low as possible for a contemporary tractor like this much higher off the ground got your fuel higher up off the ground also but have a much higher center of gravity therefore a greater risk of rolling or tipping being unstable in general on the both sides of the Alps Our trees are starting to green up. For a sign that spring is continuing to come on its way. Went ahead and finished these three fields. Yesterday, got started on three fields over by the cow area yesterday. Finished one of those up and got started into the night on the second field. All goes well. We'll be done that work later today. Verify this is indeed a field that needs lime. Is indeed, and that's the only field that we own needs lime other than the grass. So we've got a section up here. We can lime. We've got this section here. Lime. This whole section. Bottom section. This whole area. And this whole area up here well as that area over there. Got a fair bit of grass that we can lime up. Playing in the white powdery stone for a bit of time today. Offset on a lime spreader. You have the spreading arms on here, so Down a little bit more. That's it. Probably had it closer first time, or maybe about split the difference. Nope. A little bit of gas. How many loads of lime do you think I'm going to go through today? I don't know if I'm going to have the ability to keep track of it. Probably, 
I lose count, but uh, yeah, I know there's some debate as to if lime helps out grass. Grass really needs lime. My philosophy is this: it says it needs lime. I'm going to give it lime. I don't really care. So, if you're in the camp that liming grass is useless. Fine. If you're in the camp that liming grass is of benefit. That's fine. I'm not going to say either way. Other than to say that just as a typical method of gameplay, if it says it needs lime, I'll put lime on it. One thing I won't bother with is won't bother with plowing grass because of the fact that it's just, in my opinion, not worth the extra little 10%. To go through the effort of plowing it all up and planting it all back. Just to probably have it say it needs plowed again. So, leave it at need plowed. And easily get rid of the lime. Putting lime down. And it doesn't seem like you ever need to lime it back. It's like that default first needs lime. Once you satisfy it, good to go. In that respect, maybe you don't need lime. It never uses it up, but. Lime doesn't cost that much. Not like we really have too much to do. The fact that we only have a ground temp of 39 still. Means that uh, from our planting schedule, effectively the only thing that would germinate at this point is our wheat and barley we're going to be putting in the fields. Nothing else would germinate, so we might as well not bother with putting it in the ground quite yet. My general philosophy. With seasons, you now have the ability to have failed germination. So, why risk it? Why encourage failed germination? Thirty six, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty nine. We really need forty one. Corn, we need forty three for our sunflowers. Wheat and barley, that's about all we can put in the ground at this point, anyway. Hey, I'm still really enjoying the look of this map like the distant mountains like the fact that we've got kind of individual trees placed up there in the distant scenery it's not just a, a image graphic that was kind of the thing in the past farm sims where you would have a distance graphic that mountain far far off in the distance is pretty much a distance graphic but this mountain here, near mountain, extends a little bit beyond the bridge. It is both a, might not even be a graphic, it might actually be terrain. I think Darren went up there over the collision. He went over the collision when we were looking at the, at the gondola cable car thing. But we have individual, they're 2D trees. Not three-dimensional tree, um, but individual trees are placed over there to give you that sense that that's a forest, something there. So, really like this technique. Interesting to see what it looks like, how it's done, and how other folks kind of emulate that technique going forward. Head on back and get another load of lime and uh, talk to you guys here a little bit later today. Putting this lime down on the grass 
really does make you feel you are farming at the top of the world very very scenic vistas sure and some pretty tough inclines pretty tough hillsides well a lot of it is relatively flat There's some pretty deep parts that uh, well, I'm glad this is a game because I don't think I would want to be in a tractor like this big load of heavy limestone behind me uh, fairly high center of gravity implements but uh, man look at this view absolutely stunning and so you're farming on top of the world up here Place the limestone because we're going to need an awful lot of it to fill out the fields to show you what we've got accomplished. So far, it's nearly 3 p.m. Uh, we've got this area limed up. This area's been limed up, and you can see this extends over here to field one property line, so we're never going to be able to get that. This area here limed up, and this was super steep, right? Got this area here. Climbed up fence line that comes across here helps separate the two property boundaries. Got the grass down here, below the farm limed up here, limed up. So, all we got to do now is climb this big area and lime this here. Helper has been working tirelessly all day long and is nearly done. Field three and put all of our fields in a cultivated state means next week we'll be ready to plant I said I don't know how many loads of lime we've done probably at least six at this point just about twelve thousand dollars in lime so far Lime's not really super expensive good thing This is why I really didn't want to buy field one. I didn't really want to do a lot of farming right here at the map border. And things kind of fall apart right here at the map border. 2D trees. And the complete loss of foliage layers. Painted layer at that point. Take a look at the map that way. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to take the rest of the day to uh, finish liming this up. Helper will be done. When I join you guys next Monday, we'll be putting our first speed in the ground. Beat. Hopefully, the ground will warm up and uh, we'll be able to finish all of our planting next week. It is Thanksgiving week, so typically say safe travels. I don't think too many people are going to be safely traveling this year, which, quite frankly, is a big old shame. At uh, any rate, until next time, happy farming. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.